and welcome to a special bonus episode of Antidote Stories in Medicine. Stay tuned for the end of the episode where I have some pretty exciting announcements for you. But right now we have back on Dan from one of our way earlier episodes. If you have been following on social media, Dan just completed his firefighter stair climb. If you don't remember Dan's episode, his episode was Why We Do It. And the preceding episode was Pete Hopkins episode. What the fuck was that called? Um, <laughs> Pete's episode, Do What You Can. So go check those out if you haven't heard them yet because they're fantastic and you'll understand why we're talking to Dan again. You'll need a little bit of context for it. Hey, Dan, welcome back. Ah, thanks for having me. <laughs> so you went and did the firefighter stair climb. How was it? I did. It was, a, it was a pretty incredible experience. It was a lot harder than I was expecting. The train, <laughs> I, the train I did on the stair mill didn't help out as much as I was hoping it would, but uh, it, was, it was just overall the based experience. So for anyone that is just kind of jumping into listening to this podcast, Dan, you lost your leg in Afghanistan and then you went and became a firefighter and you've been training ever since to do the stair climb. Do you feel like you struggled any more than other people doing it or was everybody huffing and puffing after a certain point? No, there's a lot of a lot of people that were having a rough time with it. There's some people that were absolutely incredible with how fast they were going up those stairs. I don't know if my, I mean, there, there are going to be some issues with doing a stair climb that are going to be a little bit harder for me without having the use of ankles to push up. It's all from my quads. For the most part, actually surprising afterwards, my legs didn't hurt that bad. So I think my biggest issue, like like a lot of people, was just conditioning just wasn't where it should be for the climb. But I, I was pretty happy with at least finishing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think I could do it. How many flights of stairs was it and how long did it take you? It was 69 floors and my time was like an hour and 16 minutes. So it was nothing to brag about. One of the slower times of the day, but this time was just mainly kind of get a feel for it and just get it done. And then next year I'm going to shoot for a, a faster time. So next year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I guess it wasn't that bad, even though it was a little bit rough. Oh no, by uh, floor between between floors five and 10, uh, in my head, I was telling myself, why the hell am I thinking of doing this <laughs> next year? This is the stupidest idea ever. And then I realized I had another, you know, 50, 60 some odd floors to go. And yeah, but then you get to the top and you're like, you know what? That wasn't too bad. I don't really remember the pain anymore. So uh, maybe, maybe we'll try it again next year. So something kind of crazy happened to you during the stair climb. Someone recognized you from the podcast. Oh yeah. Yeah. It was funny because I'm, I'm on the 40th floor getting my bottle changed out and, and I had to take a, like a five minute break up there to kind of, kind of catch my wind. And uh, someone came up to me and was like, Hey, I know who you are. And I'm thinking, cause you know, the local media has done this. They did a story on it at, uh, at the climb too. So they've done three stories on me. I was like, Oh, they probably just saw me on the news. And she's like, no, I know you from the, that podcast. And I'm like, how do you know me from the podcast? It's my voice. So it was it was pretty incredible to have that experience too to have someone recognize you just from your last name. That's so crazy. While you're sitting there trying not to die, so <laughs> that's so insane. It was so insane for me when they posted on the Facebook wall too. I was like, "What is from the podcast?" I mean, Dan, you're like a celebrity now. You're like, I don't know who the kids like Kendall Jenner or something. If Kendall Jenner lost her leg in Afghanistan to an IED, or something. <laughs> if I didn't know who that was. <laughs> <laughs> So you raised a bunch of money by doing I this. I did just short of a couple bucks short of 3000. That's incredible. And there is a bunch of people that are listening to the podcast that donated as well. So thank you guys to everyone that donated. I think just from like what our, my casual calculation, I think from just this podcast donated, I think around 350 and the guys from just some podcast who are friends of our show donated, I think around a hundred bucks themselves. So uh, check their podcast out too. They're they're fantastic, and thanks to them for donating and everyone else that donated. Yes, thank you very much. It was a uh, it was incredible. My goal was originally just to get to eighteen hundred because with eighteen, it's a it's a good good size amount, but it also allows me to have early registration for next year. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, we almost doubled that with three thousand. So it, I mean, it was a pretty incredible amount of money that we raised. That's that's just amazing. And where are the donations going to? So the donations go to the LLS or the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, and it goes towards also research for uh, other um, blood cancers to help in the fight with that. 
Yeah, and that's a huge problem for firefighters it with is. all the the carcinogen exposure. So, what else have you been up to? I hear you've been taking a class. I am. Um, I'm halfway done with, or a little over halfway done with EMT class right now. Um, I've about a five and a half weeks left. So that's uh, it's been going pretty well. Do you like it? I think when we talked last time, you're like, ah, I just got to do it for the job, but whatever. <laughs> I, I do. It's actually, it's really interesting. I think it's also, you know, a great thing to learn just for just knowledge on it. But uh, I think it's actually really cool. I, I, if I didn't get so motion sick, I would love to go to paramedic school, but <laughs> it's, it's really amazing learning the stuff that we learn. I mean, we learn way more than we're going to be actually be able to do as EMTs. Right. So it's, it's really neat. Learn all the different, basically how to, you know, to figure out what's going on with someone and, and uh, put all the pieces together to, to come up with a, what's wrong with the person. So I, th- I think it's actually really amazing. Yeah. When I took my EMT class, I mean, this was in high school. I mean, this was so long ago, but it was just like, oh my God, there's all these things that you could f- problem solve to figure out what's going on. Even though I couldn't really do much of anything about it, just trying to like run through the puzzle in my head and see what was going on. I just fell in love with it. And kind of that adrenaline of of going to calls and, and doing all of it. I loved it. And I ended up teaching a bunch of like BLS classes too over the years. It's just a lot of fun and it's fun to get people excited about it too. Cause it's, it's great, just general knowledge, but it's just kind of really cool just to see how things work and especially different like pathophysiologies and stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah. What part are you guys on now? Today we're going over psychiatric emergencies is what training is today. So we've been going over the different ones. Um, Cardiac emergencies, neurological emergencies. Now we're on yeah. the the psychological aspects of it now. And psych emergencies are probably one of the biggest things you're going to see in EMS, especially at the BLS level, and probably one of the the areas where you could have the biggest impact. But I think unfortunately EMS does not get great training in this. We could do so much better as far as handling psychiatric emergencies, and that's something I only really learned way way late down the line in my career. But it's very interesting and just always have compassion when you're dealing with someone that's having that kind of emergency. It's you see some wild stuff when you're <laughs> working BLS and you go to a psychiatric emergency and it can get very, very dangerous. The calls I've done so far. So through EMT school, I've only had uh, one patient contact so far, but prior to that with the the calls I did with the, the fire department, um, mm-hmm. We've had a few psychological calls, but nothing really crazy. Just mainly people telling crazy stories and uh, yeah. life stories and stuff. We so like nothing. To tell stories. Yeah. So they and and there's a there's you know a big problem with drug use and stuff going on. So I haven't had a whole lot of experience with that yet, but you know it, it's going to start happening now because with uh, that's a great thing about being an EMT and getting that certification done is I can be a bigger part of the calls when I go on them. And uh, yeah. so I'm doing another um, ride along this Friday and then next Monday. So try and get as many patient contacts as I can. And so I'm pretty sure I'll get a lot more <laughs> exposure <laughs> to the the psychological side of it. How much ride time do they have you do in EMT school? So they want you to get at least five patient contacts um, okay. with either, you know, the local fire department or the ambulance uh, company that works out here too. So it's at least five, um, but you know we're all shooting for more than that. I think I only did like eight hours of ride time with a paramedic truck when I did my EMT. So it was like, I mean, we did more than five patients in that eight hours, but it was still not much of anything. And then they're like, I did some ER time too. It was again, eight hours. And I was like, there you go. And But many EMT programs don't even do clinical time. They're just like, okay, go ahead. And then you just learn on the job. So yep. but it's great you're getting to do that. That seems like a really good program. Is it yeah. through a community college or through a fire department? It's through a fire department. Um, Central Kitsap is running this this program here. And there's others around the area, but this is through Central Kitsap. That's great. Has there been one thing in particular that you've really enjoyed so far or one thing you really hated? Uh, you know, it's it's all been kind of, um, I've, I've kind of enjoyed all of it. I really like the cardiac side of it. I really like learning how the, you know, the blood flows, how the heart works and all the things that go along with that. <laughs> There's been a couple like uh, areas like the the gastro area I had a, a little issue with trying to learn all the parts of that um, and then trying to keep up with like the time tests that that's mm. been a, a hard, <laughs> some of these tests are like, oh, you have, you know, 40 minutes to do a 50 question test. And like, you're trying to think because the questions are written so crazy. You're like trying to take your time to read it slow <laughs> when you're like, I'm running out of time. Um, yeah. But is, is I, I think cardiac's been my favorite part of it, and I think neurological second. 
um, I think those are really, it's really cool learning how the body works. Yeah. Anything else you want to say before you head out for, I think you have a test tonight. No, just really just, I mean, you know, to your listeners and all that have helped with my climb, I, I really, really appreciate everyone that, that came together to help with that and, and to raise that money and just crush my goal. And hopefully next year, you know, I can come back on and, and talk before we do the climb again and uh, hopefully get some help with that. That's pretty much the big thing is just, you know, thank you to everyone that helped me with the climb. And uh, I look forward to come back and talk with all of you again in the future. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming back and giving us a little bit of an update. It's so cool to have an update and so insane that you got recognized. So uh, <laughs> yeah, it was. I'm so proud that you got to do it and, and good luck in EMT school. And hopefully you'll maybe get motion sickness treatment and you can go into paramedic school or do it in a stationary position. <laughs> yeah. Either way, I'll be work with, with the fire department, I'll be work with paramedics. So it'll be, uh, it'll be great to be working with them. Paramedics are generally pretty chatty and like to teach things. So I'm sure you can learn a bunch just from that anyways. For sure. Definitely. <laughs> All right. Well, good luck on your test tonight and thank you so much. Great. Thank you. Okay, so now for some special announcements. Um, there's some big stuff happening with the podcast. It has been growing like crazy and I am so grateful for everyone. It has been so awesome to see what this podcast has become. Dan got recognized by a listener during a stair climb, which is just just mind boggling for me. And I absolutely love having you all as listeners. And so, because I know some of you guys out there are sharing the podcast and leaving reviews. And because of that, I'm getting to meet more and more fantastic guests. I'm going to do a little bit of a giveaway. So starting on March 25th through April 5th, if you share the podcast or leave a review on iTunes, somewhere where I can see that you basically shared it, I'm going to put your name into a hat. And by hat, I mean Google Sheets and random number generator. And at the end of that, I'm going to pick out a winner and announce it on the podcast that will be released on April 8th. And the winner is going to get a free signed copy of Dr. Howard's book, Cognitive Errors and Diagnostic Mistakes, A Case-Based Guide to Critical Thinking in Medicine. So if you really liked that episode, if you thought, wow, that sounds like a really cool book, wouldn't it be fantastic to have a signed copy of it? Just share the podcast. And if you share the podcast multiple times or you leave a review and share it, you'll get entered twice. So it's just kind of a little of my thank you for you for a lot of you that are sharing it anyways. And then I'll announce it and then I will mail it out to you. And so the next thing is, is if you are enjoying bonus episodes like this, I got a lot of really great feedback from the CO poisoning episode that people liked more of the educational episodes. And there were some really great suggestions about things I should do, like talking about measles and talking about hypertensive urgency management and all different kinds of stuff. And I really want to do this for you, but I work full time and I have a per diem job and I also do this podcast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a Patreon account. And so if you want to donate two, five or seven dollars and have some benefits, which are going to be announced, then you can help me pay for an editor so I can come up with the content, research those little educational bonus episodes and have an editor actually edit them because editing takes up so much of my time. I don't really have any extra left in my week to do both. So if you contribute to the Patreon at the five and seven dollar levels, then you get access to bonus episodes from guests that have been on before. The education episodes will be free. So if other people are contributing to Patreon, everyone will get the education episodes because I do think that medical education should be free. But um, if you want to be a patron, that would be so nice of you. I could hire an editor, hopefully have more regular episodes released, hopefully get some merch for you guys and have some more bonus content that would be really cool. Because I know Alyssa was like, oh, I got some more great stories I want to share with you. Even Dr. Howard was like, I forgot to talk about this. I'd love to come back on. And I'm like, great, I don't have time to edit all of this content. So having someone else that would help me go through all that would be infinitely helpful and patrons would help cover that cost. So if you want to sign up for Patreon, it would be fantastic. I haven't even set it up yet. So that's just coming in the future. Um, and then there'll be more episodes like Dan's for you guys to, to hear. So that's just some big stuff that's coming to the podcast. Remember, share episodes and leave reviews from March 25th to April 5th. You could win a copy of Dr. Howard's book that has been signed by him. 
called Cognitive Errors and Diagnostic Mistakes, a Case-Based Guide to Critical Thinking in Medicine. And as always, if you want to reach out to me on social media, Twitter, Antidotes Pod, Instagram, Antidotes Podcast, Facebook, Antidotes Stories in Medicine, and you can always email me at antidotespodcast at gmail.com. Thank you to Peter Hopkins for our lovely custom music. I hope you guys enjoy this special bonus episode. Have a good one. Bye.